Okay, hello, welcome to Geography 151. Uh, my name is Carrie Littlejohn. I am the professor for this course. Um, I am going to apologize before I even start. Um, I have been having varying degrees of laryngitis since last October, um, October, November. Um, I've <laughs> Basically, the doctors say there's nothing they can do, so you will hear my voice kind of fluctuate between one day and one week being perfectly fine and the next not. Um, anyways, okay, to move on with life, uh, welcome. This is Geography 151, Human Geography and Contemporary Society. This is a very intense summer course. Um, we start on July 2nd and we are done by July 31st. This course is entirely online. Uh, you do not have to be on campus for anything from exams to submissions to meetings to discussions to lectures. You can do this all in your own time um, from wherever you happen to be. Um, I am on campus. I have an office in Gilmore. If you, I'm pretty much there Monday to Friday, eight to five. Um, but if you uh, want to reach me, please send me an email so we can, so I'm expecting you and I can be there. Um, the same thing I can, you know, we can chat via phone, Skype, whatever you need, send me an email. There's my email address. Um, to give you a really quick background on myself, um, I have been teaching this course at UH for about five years been teaching a, a very, very, pretty much the same course at um, Hawaii Pacific University as well for the last couple of years. I have my PhD in geography from the University of Hawaii. I have a master's degree in sustainable development and policy from the University of Illinois, and I have a master's of education um, from the University of Rochester. I used to be a high school teacher in the South Bronx way a long time ago. I lived in the Andes for a few years where I was a teacher, and then finally lived in the Galapagos Islands off of the coast of Ecuador for about 10 years before I moved here about five years ago. Um, and so, yeah, that's me in a nutshell without going into too much detail and boring you. Uh, so required text. I'm going to go through the syllabus really quickly, and then I'm just going to kind of glaze over uh, La Lima. Um, this is kind of the first lecture just to get you a little bit more oriented. A lot of this you can read on your own, and I will expect to read on your own later. Let me know if you have a mess or a question, and I can always do another quick video answering any questions or just individually answer them via announcement or email. Um, okay, so the required text for this course is called Visualizing Human Geography. You can have the second edition or the third edition. I think my personal copy is the second edition. The third edition, if I'm not mistaken, is only available by e-text. Uh, you can get the, and this is why I allow the second edition, um, they're pretty much the same, but the second edition, um, you can rent a copy, um, sorry, just a second. <coughs> um, okay, <coughs> sorry, another sneeze. Um, you can rent a copy uh, from Amazon, I think it's just, last time I checked a few weeks ago it was under twenty dollars. You can also buy a hard book copy or a soft book, but um, you can actually buy a physical textbook as well for about the same price um, used. That would be. And um, we will also be using La Lima, our course site. Uh, here's the class overview. I'm going to expand on this more during the first week of lectures, so I'm not going to go into this too much here. You can read this on your own. Um, again, course objectives. Um, this is kind of like about online expectations. This is intense. So remember, you would normally be spending, if this were an on-campus course, you would be spending three to four hours a day in class and then going home and studying some more. Um, you should expect more or less the same time requirement for this course as you would if you were actually on campus with me. Um, all of the times that we use for this course are Hawaii Standard Time. Anything you have due will be at 11.59 p.m. And I have this, again, located um, further down. You probably can't do everything with a smartphone or a tablet. You will, I mean, you probably you might be able to. I highly don't recommend trying. Um, course organization. This is really fast. More or less, I've divided the course into two or two sections, the first half of the book and the second half of the book to break it down for you. Um, there is for every, um, for every chapter, there are lectures and these are pretty much what you would do if you came to class, but I've broken them down. Some of them are a little long. They're about 60 minutes, 45 minutes. Most of them are 10 to 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes at the max. 
um, exam materials or sorry, um, the exam will cover anything that we cover in readings or um, videos. And then you'll see below, I've taken the time to list all of your due dates. So course requirements, what do I expect from you? Um, again, here, everything that is due must be completed by 11.59 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time on the due date. You have two exams. They're completely online. They're non-cumulative, meaning when we cover chapters one through six, the midterm exam will be chapters one through six. There might be concepts, like if we talk about what is globalization, I might ask you to define globalization on the midterm exam. I won't ask you to define it again for the final exam because that will just be on chapter seven through 12. However, I might ask you to still remember the definition of globalization to be able to answer a different question related to how is globalization, you know, an example of this, for example. Um, all of the exam questions are multiple choice and or true and false. Um, there is a time limit. I will tell you the time limit beforehand. It's generally like about an hour and a half, depending on how many questions I end up having. Um, once, you for once you open the exam, you have to complete it. Um, within the time limit, if you run out, the exam will close. Um, it should be saved, but it will close. And you cannot start an exam after a due date or a due time. Um, if something happens, it, I need to know, I don't need to know details, but I just need to have an email and know that something's going on. It's got to be a legitimate reason for you to be able to make up any of the assignments, but particularly the exams as well. I, okay, you'll next be graded on current event analysis. This is actually a pretty easy way to make a grade. Um, a good grade's got three parts. Your first one, so read again, read all this. I really take the time, I don't need to read it to you. Make sure it's a reputable and reliable resource. Um, here's a couple of articles that list some of those reliable resources. Um, and these are just as listing like the far right as much as they're listing the far left. Um, so basically pick a topic, send me the topic and send me a link for an article or reference that you will be using. Um, the next one, I expect the first draft. I do not want three sentences or a paragraph. The assignment is supposed to be a total of approximately two pages. I very rarely get anything that's less than two pages. And this is double spaced. Usually the analysis is not strong enough. Anything over two pages, usually it means that the summary is way too long. Um, and then I will give you feedback on your for your rough draft. Again, your first draft or rough draft. If you do it and you've obviously put more than just five minutes into it, and yes, I can tell, you'll get a complete credit for it. Um, and then you have your final exam or your final draft. Sorry, all of the resources that you'll need for this will be found in a folder in La Lima. Um, this tells you where you can submit everything. Um, again, what I'm largely looking for in this. You can find this in the resources I'm providing, including the grading rubric, as I'm looking for an analysis. I want to see that you're saying, you know, this is the problem I've chosen, or this is the issue I've chosen. One of the best ones I have was from a female basketball student a few years ago at UH, and she picked bubble tea in London. I um, wrote one quick paragraph, bubble tea is popping up all over London at really fast rates. Um, it started in Taiwan 10 years ago and boom, it's here, you know, or whatever it was. And then three fourths of her, um, written assignment was the analysis literally saying, well, what does this mean? Why is this happening? And, and she made some really good arguments and she, um, you know, she said, I think this is a really great example of, it's not really reverse globalization, but a lot of times we talk about globalization, we're talking about things coming from the West, from the United States, for example, to China to Japan, we tend not to think about things coming from those places to the West. I think that's changing now. That's especially changing here in Hawaii where you know, bubble tea's all over the place. Um, but if you were in a very rural area of Oklahoma, um, you know, finding a bubble tea shop, unless you're maybe like in a university town would be quite surprising. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, yeah. Um, geographic analysis assignment, um, you have four of these. There will be a fifth one. I need to add this onto your syllabus still that, that will be available for, um, extra credit. You can, you basically pick, um, and I will put something else up, um, giving you some more detail about what you need to do, but basically you pick a chapter and you'll be given two or three chapter options and you pick one of those chapters 
and you answer the questions in the back of that chapter that refers to the geographic analysis section. Um, and then you will submit these via Laulima. Um, this is just basically a quick thing. Um, all assignments, you know, it's your job. Make sure that you have everything uh, backed up, saved, do it ahead of time. I'm looking for one inch margins all around, standard font, 12 point times New Roman, for example, um, double space typed, uh, you know, don't scan a napkin, I guess. Um, map quizzes. This is the last portion of your grade here. Um, map quizzes, and I will give you a separate quick video introducing you to that site. They're a really easy way to get a really good grade. We have about 10% of your total grade, so right there, boom, um, you have 10% of your grade. Go online, complete the quizzes. Here are, they are um, outlined for you, and I will, I'll put due dates on these, so um, to break them down a little bit more for you to help you keep on track, you can work ahead. You will be given um, a specific username and password if you don't sign into the site with your username and password. I can't see that you've completed them. As long as you get a 70 out of 100 or 7 out of 10, you get full credit, meaning that you get a 10 out of 10 on in La Lima. Um, these are open note, open book. I don't expect you to memorize everything. This is kind of really just to get you more familiarized with a lot of the countries in the world and ge geographic literacy in general. Uh, so again, late policy, I don't accept late work. Um, a lot of the assignments will actually block you from being able to submit it if it's late, for example, exams. Um, so your exams, both midterm and final together, were 50% of your grade. Geographic analyses um, are worth 20% of your grade. So there'll be an extra credit one. We'll tap onto that. That allows you, so that would be worth like an additional 4% of your grade. So again, free, you technically can get out of 104%. Uh, current event analysis will be worth 20% of your grade and math quiz is worth 10%. So again, um, right there, that's 14% really. And even geographic analyses, as long as you're answering those questions and demonstrating that you're putting effort into it, I tend to just give complete grades. So these are really good ways to get good grades. Um, here's your grade scale. Can never say this enough. No late assignments. Um, okay, so course outline. Um, I've broken it down for you. I'm going to provide a little bit more detail before I put this up. I'm just trying to get everything up as fast as I can for you um, so that everything is available, hopefully even before the course starts. Uh, so here you've got the date, date, what's due, the chapter number, um, and the topic. And depending on which edition of the book you have, my chapter numbers might be a little bit different. So make sure to go off of the chapter, um, the subject topic. Um, so Monday and Tuesday, we will cover what is human geography. Feel free to work ahead. Technically, you can go behind. I don't know. Normally, I would have reading quizzes, but I'm not doing this because this is a really fast-paced course. Um, by the end of the first week, you should have your first geographic analysis due. By the next Monday, your current event topic. Um, basically, your geographic analysis due every Friday. Uh, Monday, two weeks in, you have your midterm exam. Again, this is a really fast-moving course. Um, and I've specifically it's spaced this out so that your exam is on a Monday. So you have all weekend um, to take your time and, and work on it, or study, whatever you need to do. Um, here is your current event, your report, your first draft is due so that I have enough time to give you feedback. Um, and then your third, your fourth, um, again, here's all of your um, topics. And then you finally have your current event report due on Monday the 30th. And your final exam will be due by Tuesday the 31st. Um, I'm not going to go into this too much. These are basically standard requests that we put into the syllabus. Don't plagiarize. Whatever you do, do not plagiarize. Um, yes, it is. We can tell. Um, send me an email. I cannot stress enough to please reach out to me. Let me know. The free speech, stuff like that. Um, be respectful. I still do expect you to be respectful. And if there is an instance of, you know, it's an online course, but for any reason there's an online interaction component at some point, which I've removed, and again, I normally have, but due to this fast pace, um, I've removed it. Um, again, no late assignments, um, but do let me know if something pops up. Syllabus modifications, I'll never modify anything to make your life more difficult. I just modify it to make it easier. Um, student services, we have this thing on campus called COCUA, 
It's in QLC, the Queen Lili Ukulani building, um, student services. I highly recommend going and checking it out if there's any types of accommodation you need. And here's where you find the lectures. I think we'll actually move this up a little bit. But you can see I've actually made all the lectures available uh, via YouTube. So you can go and click on the link. Lectures range from basically 10 to 60 minutes, on average about 20, 30 minutes. Um, you can see there's multiples for each one. Again, this is like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 14 minutes. Um, some of them I've tried to condense um, as much as possible, again, because this is a fast course, but um, also because it's an online course, you don't have to spend forever listening to me. Technically speaking, lectures are optional. I, it's, it's kind of sad, to be honest, um, how much time I can actually put into lectures. And I, you know, when you have something on YouTube, you can see how many views you've had. I, I can tell you not a lot of people do watch those, um, which is a little, it's a little sad because I, if those who do um, comment on them be much, very helpful. Anyways, La Lima, so go to Geography 151, uh, Summer 18. Um, the site, I'm still building the site, but I've got it all up and ready. Um, and I should have it by early next week. I'll have everything ready. Announcements, if I need to get any announcements to the class, if somebody has a question and I need to give the answer, it's relevant to everybody, then I will give you an announcement via here. And it will go to your email. Make sure you're checking your university email. Uh, discussion and private messages, I'll probably just remove that because we're not using it this time. The resources folder, you will find all of the PDF versions of your lecture slides in here. You will find another folder for, um, sorry, what kind of thing here? Another folder um, for your current event analyses, et cetera, et cetera. Any types of materials I need to get for you, I will have them here. Email, if you need to email me, you can also email me directly from your UH um, a Gmail account, syllabus, your syllabus will be uploaded here. Um, so I'll, it'll probably be attached to your first announcement as well. Um, but if you need to come back to it, it'll always be in here. Assignments, um, I probably actually won't end up using this tab. I'll just ask you to submit your geographic analyses via Dropbox. Um, and finally, tests and quizzes. This is where you'll come to take your tests and your quizzes. Um, your current event reports, your first and Final draft, except for your topic selection, you will also deposit down here in Dropbox. Um, and then your test and quizzes, this is where you will come. You'll enter in. Again, once you start, you have to finish. Um, I think that's about it. And then I will go ahead and do a separate video, um, kind of walking you through Lizard Point, because um, that takes a lot less time. Anyways, um, do let me know. Please let me know if you have any questions. I hope you enjoy this course. Um, I usually get a lot of feedback. Students really report that they've enjoyed this course. Um, but yeah, I'm around. I know we most likely probably will never meet each other. Um, but, you know, that said, you are not on your own. Um, there's a lot of academic support uh, available for UH students. Um, and I'm always around to answer questions as well. So I hope you enjoy this course. And as much as you can enjoy a semester-long course crammed into four weeks. Anyways, um, good luck, and please be in touch.